Hello friends, let's start with this topic of leasing. Now, uh, in the first slide that we have, we can see a glimpse of it. Uh, first is an aircraft. Uh, this must be a foreign airlines where it is mentioned as aircraft leasing. So we'll understand what is leasing, how aircraft or this airline industry is connected to it. Uh, the basic model is mentioned to you in the bottom where you see uh, someone is a seller and then there is a financer involved in it. And then there is someone who is actually using it or who is the potential buyer. Now you see seller and buyer. Seller is someone who is going to sell it. Buyer is someone who is going to buy it. But in case of leasing, you see buyer is not supposed to pay lump sum in lump sum. He is not supposed to make a lump sum payment. Rather, he is supposed to make lease rental. He has to make regular repayments, uh, maybe in the form of a rent, monthly rent, quarterly rent, weekly rent, annual rent to the person who is called as a financer here. He is called as a lesser. Lesser is the person who is going to actually buy this asset. But this asset is not to be used by lesser. Asset is to be used by lessee. Okay. Now you see, uh, I'll give you one example of it. Uh, you must have heard about computers. Okay. So that computer manufacturing companies are the Hindustan uh, Computer Limit Limited HCL. There is a company. Okay. So what they are doing is like they are manufacturing computers in bulk. Uh, and then let's say buyer who is a potential buyer uh, it can be any bank let's say south indian bank is a uh, buyer so would like to buy some computers but now we gotten someone called as a specialized body abc consultancy firm what are they doing is like they are going to assist south indian bank to get these computers not for purchase purpose but on rental purpose now what is happening is like you see if i'm going to buy a asset let's say i'm going to buy a computer now, computer once bought is going to be same all across, let's say, two, three, four, five years of usage. But in sector of banking, they need very frequent software updations. They need new upgrades into the infrastructure. So, you see, if I'm buying something, I cannot change it frequently. If I have to change it, it is going to be very costly. So, instead of buying it permanently, can it be possible? I, I take this on rent from someone and this rental value can be decided mutually. And then whenever there is an upgradation in software required or any other thing required in asset, I'll simply inform it to my financer, lesser, or the person who is doing it, like uh, uh, who is acting as an intermediary here. So based on my lease rentals, my lesser will help me with the needful upgradations, timely needful upgradations. Okay. Now you see, this is one example of it. So instead of buying it permanently, you take it on rent, you save heavy investment initially, and then you see this will help you to have a wider coverage let's say in the airline industry what is happening you see recently you must have, have heard about tata group who took over this uh, air india now they have placed an order for 500 aircrafts approximately 500 aircrafts and one aircraft is costing somewhere around 110 million us dollars now you see this is very costly affair if you have to buy it so what what alternative are they going to do you see why they need 500 aircrafts because you see this sector is emerging very fast in order to be market leader you have to have this much amount of fleet with you fleet means aircrafts with you so that you you uh, provide your logistics to every uh, new can corner across the globe now you see if you buy aircrafts so maybe possible that tata is able to buy for 50 100 or maybe 250 aircrafts but, but you see you have a requirement of 500 so instead of buying it why don't you take on lease Okay, so which are the companies manufacturing aircrafts, Boeing or Airbus, you see, you can do a tie-up with them, they'll give you the aircrafts on rent, not for purchase purpose, but on rent. Huh. Aircraft companies may charge you a heavy amount of rent, but simultaneously you may get your every service, every technology updation very fast. Okay, you need not to uh, do these things, maintenance is not your issue anymore, so it will be taken care by lesser. Okay, let's go forward. So what are the important areas here? We need to understand. Is it important to invest every time or we can avoid this investment, initial investment? Okay, capital expenditure. Can it be ex exempted uh, with something? Yes, it is through leasing. We can. Can we get ready material in industry so that we need not to buy it? Uh, like someone else who is doing, doing it, the role of facilitation will be ready to give us the material that we require. Instead of buying it, we, we can take it on rent from someone. Okay. Uh, you see, initial days when we were kids, we used to see video games, but that time buying a video game ad for personal use was not possible. So we, we used to we used to 
take those uh, video games on rent let's say one hour rent is uh, 10 rupee 20 rupee so you need to be like making it uh, and and you utilizing the services uh, next is like uh, do we need to pay money for like buying it again it is a repetition of what is point number one investing and putting your money blocking your assets blocking your liquidity is the same is there any uh, uh, like someone is there someone who is ready to finance for your requirement you see all these things will be covered up in this topic of leasing some of the examples are like railways do have heavy infrastructure with them they do have heavy uh, spare uh, like uh, unused land available to them so this land of railway which is kept in unused state can be given uh, on lease to some of the private players and then they can get lease rental the second picture is showing you systems lying in a lab so these systems can be on lease uh, computer companies can play it then third picture is telling you heavy machineries like they have dumper they have cranes and then heavy machines so let's say i'm making a building huh? so for making a building if i need heavy machine it is not necessary for me to buy them so it is better to take them on rent so depending on your requirement sometimes it is just a temporary requirement so you can take it on rental wheel huh? and last is like now you see niti ayog also putting up this thing like farmland can be given on lease so that we can increase the productivity across like uh, across states uh, the unutilized land can be given to people who can utilize it and it will uh, help us to like understand and uh, grow the productivity of uh, overall country in terms of land uh, and then crop production now you see uh, the context in this particular slide is uh, on air india what they are doing is like you see air india recently placed a total uh, order which is the biggest order in aviation history of approximately 470 new aircrafts and what are they doing is like they are modernizing their fleet and expanding their network now you see in this you see they have mentioned it first line is saying a new aircraft is costing around 89 million to approximately 134 million dollar so this is the cost of one aircraft and when it is approximately 500 aircrafts you can see the quantum of investment required so can we buy it yes we can but the cost will be very heavy so the interest obligation on that loan will be again very very heavy so it is better not to buy it rather taking it on rent so rental is like till the time you would like to operate you you pay the rent you use the assets and the day you would like to stop your operation you need not to pay any rent so this is very simple okay so owning your property is a problem actually one let's say you buy 500 aircrafts and let's say after three months you don't want to stay in this sector so now it is your burden you have to offload these aircraft to some other airline company and in that situation you may be required to give heavy discounts so you need not to stuck yourself into this thing and they are mentioning about uh, something called as wet lease now wet lease means where you not only take the aircrafts but also you take the crew along with it so the company which is selling you or which is giving you these aircrafts on rent will be giving you the crew member too why it is required is like sometimes you don't have the skilled manpower in your like local markets hence you you get the uh, crew members along with dry lease is where you are getting aircraft without any crew means let's say you have trained manpower but you don't have uh, aircraft so you simply go for aircrafts which is called as dry lease dry and wet lease two types of lease let's go forward so leasing is actually a contract okay in a contract you have two parties one is lesser second is lessee and then they do uh, give consideration to each other lessee will get the consideration of utilizing the property for his own personal use and lesser is going to get the rental value for an agreed period of time okay and then you see this is for tangible assets any something that we can see touch feel uh now types of leasing means here you have financial lease where you see this is nothing but it is also known as capital lease or let's say you're getting a financing for a capital equipment that you would like to have so these are non-recoverable type means once your loan is given uh instrument is there on your doorstep for which finance financial lease is there is you, you cannot stop it revocable means where you can stop it in mid and uh can uh withdraw from your stand but these are usually non-revocable nature operating lease is different where you see asset use usage transferred for short period let's say i'm giving you an asset in case of aircraft lease you see it can be an aircraft it can be in taxi taxi cabs okay so what is happening is like for a fixed period of time you have taken these uh like machines on rental and you see if you have a problem you can stop these agreements anytime you want these hence it is mentioned here revocable in nature means you can stop it you can take an exit from this contract anytime you want next is like sale and lease back 
sale and leaseback means what uh, in this let's say i am owning a property this property is huge i need money so for um, uh, generating money i need to sell it to someone but i need this property because i do have some shops which are running from this building itself uh, so what i'm i can do is like i can sell this property to someone and to the person whom i'm selling he is going to give me heavy like heavy uh, amount of uh, like the cost for this building so i will i'll not only get my heavy amount of cash in my pocket but also i'm getting one right from this owner the new owner that i'm going to use this property at a fixed rental value so what is happening is like i'm giving my property to the other party but i'm going to still going to retain it with me I'll, I'll i'm going to keep on using it against a rental value so i'm going to get some lump sum amount of money so i can extract this amount of money from my uh, existing business line where i do have some ownership in some tangible assets and can use it for some other expansion okay leverage see, lease is nothing but where third party is involved leverage means loan so someone is you see what i am doing is i want to buy a car i am not going to take it on my name i am asking another party to help me in it now this party is willing to come into it like let's say i tell you uh, in lpu there is a one side of your lpu is called as logit there one business is very much flourishing what is this business is like students were staying in logit they they are taking uh, vehicles on rent they are taking thar this is a four wheeler uh, thar is a very fashionable vehicle so you see one day rental for thar goes into 7 to 10000 rupees okay for a four wheeler normal four wheeler apart from thar it is like you see every day 2000 rupees 1500 to 2000 rupees you can charge on a bike in field bike you may charge 1000 to 1500 rupees as charge for one day now what people are doing is like they are buying these uh, buying these properties these tangible assets on uh, on their name means taking a loan or something so and then using it for rental purpose any yani you can further give it to people for rental purpose so this is one example where you are taking a loan to buy an asset and then using that loan Uh, uh, you have what property you have bought? You are giving it to someone for rental purpose. So this is what is your uh, lease, uh, leverage lease. Okay. Now there can be a lease which can be called as open lease and then close ended lease. So uh, the point is like in open and close lease is like when are you going to give an option for purchase? Is it available in for infinite period of time or is it available for a time bounded manner? Let's say I give you one week to take a call whether you would like to continue or you would like to discontinue. So when I'm giving you a timeline, that is what is called as close-ended. And open-ended is like you can opt for this, like uh, like uh, this uh, contract renewal any time. Huh? You, you you there is no problem. You see, sometimes you find landlords where they come up with legal contracts, and at the expiry of contract, they may be very rigid, will not would not be liking to extend the contract, and will be speaking very legal to you. Whereas the second category is like some ten owners, uh, some uh, like owners. will be very polite to their tenants so tenants are given a choice you see even though we don't have any contract but uh, it is implied and at the expiry of contract the tenant has to take a call would you like to extend further or would you like to end it here so you see it, it, this is what is open end and close ended lease contract next is upfront lease upfront lease is like where you see heavy charges are there imposed in initial period rather than uh, later periods later periods means let's say i i take a asset this building for 10 year lease where i have to pay more as rental value in initial years because my productivity in initial few years is going to be very high and as compared to later years so this upfront lease is like you you can take an example of a vehicle ha huh? in vehicle we do have something called as depreciation in depreciation we have something called as written down value of depreciation means initial few years depreciation will be high in later years depreciation will be less so this looks more practical in nature whereas you see the second method is in back end lease means less rental in first few years and then very high rental in very late years what it means like this must be a project which is recently started where cash flows may be a challenge for the the person who is going into this contract so in order to compensate in order to give him some cushion so in initial few years rental value will be less but projected uh, sales Uh, in this particular uh, pr pr projected consumption in this particular sector by uh, your potential clients is very high in future years so what he is doing is like he is paying less in first few years and paying very high in later few years so this is what is back end lease 
so now again you have a concept of percentage lease means lease rental agreements every year will have some upgradation yani you see for uh, property lease rental uh, let's say you have rent agreement uh, so uh, there is a notional hike every year in terms of percentage like say 5% or 10% hike every year so i am paying 10 5000 rupee rent now next year it will be 500 rupee enhancement so 5500 5, rupee will be my next year rent so this is what is called as percentage lease 3n lease is net 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 okay so i'll i'll explain you 3n lease in in my next slide uh, where it is mainly the role of lessee who has to bear it for maintenance he has to bear it for insurance and the property taxes that are involved usually the maintenance insurance and taxes they are actually covered by lessor they they are paid by lessor but in this case lessee is the main person who is supposed to do it okay then we have cross border lease which means we are doing some lease agreement with some parties who are Uh, uh, established or positioned in different countries so hence we have to go for an international lease wet lease and dry lease we have already seen it now you see this is what is nnn triple n okay now you see here n is mentioned single double and triple so you can get it very easily differentiated on the basis of certain criteria base rent is going to be there in all three property taxes will be there in all three but insurance is not there in first one okay but where it is double net uh, lease uh, structure you see uh, base rent property and insurance is to be paid by the lessee and in triple n which is nnn model you see not only the base rent but also the property tax and insurance and common area maintenance everything has to be borne by the lessee so you see you will think ki like why why lessee would like to have this thing you see sometimes it is your situation where you don't have much of bargaining capacity with you and lesser is so adamant that you have to bear it all and because of your less bargaining capacity you need to go into it and you see not only this but also ki like you would like to claim some relaxation in the name of property tax insurance and these are your charges these are your expenses which you can uh, adjust in your profit computation and will reduce your taxes okay so this is what is the benefit or consideration for lessee to have all these things in their pocket now some advantages you don't need large cash outflow initially tax advantages are there uh, in, mo in most of the cases it is for lesser but in triple n it is going towards lessee now budgeting again it will help you for budgeting budgeting is nothing planning in advance so uh, it he helps you actually getting finance from some other source hey, it acts as a hedge against risk of obsolescence means what i was telling you is like let's say we bought something a mobile phone today and tomorrow we see a new model of mobile phone now you see this old mobile phone is obsolete because the technology used in this mobile phone is is has actually drastically changed so you see such transitions are very fast product life cycle is like is going very fast means a obsolescence is coming up very fast so buyer has to bear it but in case of uh, lessee lesser agreement of uh, leasing you see lesser has to bear it lessee means the user need not to do it so it is actually a hedge okay what are the disadvantages there is no ownership even though you are using it you are paying it you you pay rent for your building for almost a decade or let's say 2 3 decades but you don't have the ownership of this property this is a weakness and this is a long term expense means uh, it is not a one month or two months phenomena it is going to be a long term phenomena maintenance is to be borne by you in certain cases and sometimes you see owner will put in a restriction of use so there will be certain terms and condition that you have to adhere to and then termination of contract is again a part of your contract so there may be certain situations where lesser would uh, reserve certain rights and termination of contract may be one of it so if they don't like uh, or they may have a market change some some sort of change in market where other service uh, buyers would like to pay a better price so maybe they they may end up this contract abruptly paying some compensation no doubt but they may go with some other competitor okay competitor player so this is what is there in leasing hope you have got a fair idea on leasing good day take care thank you